The latest on negotiations in Congress. Let's bring in Senator Dick Durbin of Illinois, a top member of the Democratic leadership. Thanks so much for joining us during this especially busy time. So it seems like both sides are saying that you're close to a deal, but of course the devil is in the details. So let's break down some of the key sticking points and, and what those are right now. First, uh, where do things stand on those stimulus checks going out to American families? We've certainly seen some members from both sides of the aisle calling for larger checks than six hundred dollars per person so what exactly is on the table six hundred dollars was the latest figure that I've heard now the negotiations aren't complete uh, so I don't want to suggest that I know the final word it's still being negotiated but there is a basic agreement that there'll be a cash payment given to many American families what seems to be the major sticking point at this particular time well, there are a lot of needs in our country at this moment, as you can imagine, first on the coronavirus front, but secondly on the economic front, to think that some close to some 900,000 people applied for unemployment last week is an indication of how serious uh, the economy is, is troubled. Uh, and we want to make sure that we provide the assistance we can for them. This is the bill we proposed that was brought to the, to the negotiating table. Uh, won four Democratic senators and four Republican senators. I was one of them. Really, basically said this is a stopgap measure. This is an emergency nature uh, of emergency nature. We've got to give unemployment benefits and help the businesses immediately. This is not a long-term response. And do you think that we could see a boost of additional money going to those with dependent children? And can you do that without the price tag getting too high for Republicans to sign on? What do you think is the best way to thread that needle? Well, I, I think. The amount of money that we're going to give in the checks and the families that would qualify them, we're trying to fit that into the $900 billion, roughly $900 billion bill. I understand we're making some progress on that. We're close to it. But those families are in desperate need. Many of them have been troubled and rely on food banks and, and struggle to keep their families together. Uh, above all, in this holiday season, we ought to be helping them all we can. And speaking of the holiday season, how soon do you think that Americans could see those checks after a bill passes because of the holidays? Do you think that they, they may likely not come until January? Well, I don't know that. And I can tell you that I learned a long time ago that when you predict something that close to home and that personal, be careful. Right. I don't know what the timetable would be for delivering the checks. As you've stated and people know firsthand, so much need right now on so many fronts. So. Uh, are there any spending priorities that either side is either insisting on or objecting to right now that you would say is a deal breaker for Democrats to getting a deal? Or is this a matter of, of getting to agreement on some of the dollar amounts? Listen, we come so far since Tuesday when this group, bipartisan group of senators uh, and House members, for, for that matter, announced the basic uh, of this agreement. I am hopeful. I, I think that leaders have really shown some initiative and along with the White House to sit down and get this done in the next 24, 48 hours. I hope that it's done quickly. And I know that you're leery about giving a time frame, but any sense if this could drag into next week before Christmas, or do you think that it'll be wrapped up soon? And could we potentially see a temporary government shutdown over the weekend? Well, I don't want to see any government shutdown. That's inexcusable. And that means we have to get our job done tomorrow. And I think we can start it. Uh, We'll start in the House of Representatives and then come over to the Senate. We can do our work as quickly as the members will cooperate. And just curious, why does this always seem to happen with Congress when it comes down to the last minute when you've known about these deadlines for months? For example, why was Tuesday, just a few days before the government funding runs out, the first time that the four leaders of Congress actually got together in the same room? And do you think that a President Biden will be able to change that dynamic? So how many people wait till the last minute to file their income tax? How many people put off that annual trip to the dentist? It is human nature to wait until there's a deadline and you have to make a tough decision. I hope Joe Biden can do a better job of getting this done on a timely and orderly basis. But we're going to try to finish this year as best we can. And we heard President-elect Biden say just yesterday that any deal at this particular time is just a down payment and that he'll pursue more funding efforts once he's in office. But given how difficult these negotiations have been, do you think that it'll be even more difficult to get Republicans to sign on to additional spending beyond this? And how much could that hamper Biden's agenda, especially if you're not able to capture those two Senate seats in Georgia? Well, I can tell you this. Uh, whoever wins in Georgia... There are some bottom line uh, elements here, and one of them is we are in a pandemic and people are dying in record numbers. We shouldn't hesitate to get involved in any political fight over that. 
We've got to put every penny necessary for the logistics, for example, of moving vaccines across the country. We've got to do everything we can for testing and tracing uh, to try to keep people safe as we fight this pandemic. So I hope no one wants to play politics with that. It is a matter of life and death. And lastly, you called Russia's alleged hacking of multiple U.S. government agencies, quote, virtually a declaration of war. So beyond changing the relationship with Russia, what should the new Biden administration do at this point? For example, should the U.S. be conducting offensive cyber operations against Russia in response? Listen, I don't want to see a war, but I want to tell you what, what is unfolding by the day is alarming. Things that we have invested billions of dollars in to protect America have been compromised by one of our major enemies, Russia. This president has been silent. I can't understand why he hasn't spoken out. He was silent as well when it came to bounties on the heads of American soldiers by Russians. I, I just don't understand that any president of either political party that I have known would have been screaming to the rooftops that anybody who does that to the United States has a heavy price to pay. Senator Dick Durbin, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.